Hello everyone, welcome to another Teach Kelvin Your Thing session. My name is Kelvin and today I'll be learning all about styling with design tokens and token CSS with Nate Moore from the Astrobuild team. Hello Nate, how are you doing? Hey Kelvin, how are you? I'm doing great. Uh, yeah, I'm great as well. So I'm really pumped about this particular session because it claims to almost want to be a competitor to Tailwind CSS and I'm really looking forward to seeing that but before that before we get into the weeds and you trying to convince me on that note could you introduce yourself tell us who Nate Moore is what you've done previously and what you're currently doing yeah absolutely um yeah I'm a core team member uh on the Astro build team uh which is a static site generator framework um mm -hmm. for building faster websites so um yeah, that's a really fun project. I've been involved in that for whew, coming up on two years now. Um, and yeah, on the side, I'm kind of uh, doing this token CSS thing. Um, previously, I worked at an agency and was really involved more on the design side of things. Um, so a lot of these ideas are coming from that area of my background, um, kind of hoping to bridge the gap between development ideas and design ideas and hopefully build like a really smooth process uh, bridge between them. Ooh, nice. I know Astro because <laughs> my website is powered by Astro. It's a phenomenal framework. I love it. Okay, so, but that's not the topic for today. Today we're going <laughs> to talk about your project, um, design um, token CSS. So I think we could start off with what problem design tokens are solving on that note, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so design tokens, just to start, are kind of, you can think of them as variables. Um, that's really how most people work with them. And there's no specific tool you need to use them. If you're using custom properties in CSS, you can do that. Um, SAS obviously has had variables for a really long time. Mm -hmm. um, but Design token methodology is kind of about the workflow of um, breaking things down into the smallest possible pieces. So there's actually a lot of designers working on um, this uh, draft, which is a W3C community group. Um, so it's not like an official web spec or anything, um, but it is the design tokens format um, that is hopefully going to be interoperable between mm -hmm. a bunch of different design tools. So you can imagine like Figma uh, and Adobe, which are now you know going to be the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of other tools, uh, design tools, that could hopefully read this format. And you could basically work with your colors and your fonts um, and then generate this file that you could share and kind of migrate between tools. Um, which would be really awesome because right now uh, design tokens are all these sort of custom formats um, okay. and they don't really talk to each other. Mm -hmm. um, so all your tools, if you're writing your colors in one tool, you know, you have to convert it to a version that the other tool understands. So the idea here is having a f single file format that all of these tools can read uh, and, and work with. Okay, so sort of like JSON for styling Totally. So okay. yeah, you wouldn't be writing the mm -hmm. actual styles using this. You would just kind of define your tokens. And then, oh, okay. um, so yeah, it's basically just a format for variables um, that your system could uh, read from. And, you know, in Figma, you would get all your like color styles and things like that. Um, so the idea with token CSS is this is that version for CSS. Oh, Nice. Cool. That makes a whole lot of sense. So um, how do we get started with this? Because it sounds interesting. So as a, let's say, let's take from two perspectives, as a designer designing and as a front-end engineer trying to implement those design, which part benefits more from design tokens and uh, token CSS? Yeah, I think both 
uh, sides of the equation are going to benefit a lot. I think once the tools kind of build in primitives for working with this format, I'm sure there are Figma plugins and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but once your design tool kind of speaks this language, um, that's going to be very exciting. And then for, you know, for the design side, um, and then just imagine how easy handoff would be with your development team when you can just like give them a file mm -hmm. uh, that Figma generated for you and then they're already up and running um, and can just start writing some code. Nice, nice. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think, I don't know about you, but I think we should dive in. It's sounding too interesting right now. Do you, you want to yeah. go? Totally, let's do it. All right, I'll show you um, your screen now. Cool. There you are. Yeah. So, yeah, we have a little website. Um, mm -hmm. It's really tiny and still working on docs. Um, but there's a little demo here. And all this is, uh, I already have it pulled down. Um, but this is our Astro template. Um, so it's pr a pretty simple uh, format here. Uh, so this is a basic Astro project. Um, and we have this token CSS integration. Mm -hmm. um, and this is going to set up post CSS and everything for you. Um, and then what it does is it reads a token config file. So this is really uh, that file format that we were talking about. Yeah. Um, and you can see it's just JSON, um, mm. which you know hopefully every tool can read. Yeah. Uh, it probably looks a lot like a Tailwind config file. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's just a little different. So I think there's definitely inspiration from Tailwind here. I know you're a big fan. Um, so yeah, the idea is like maybe Tailwind one day you could you could take this file and drop it into your Tailwind project and it could read from this. Um, okay. That would that would be really cool. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, any any uh, tokens have are basically an object that has a value. Um, and I think in the latest version of the spec, um, there's a, a dollar sign in front to denote that it's like a special value. Okay. Um, I haven't updated to that yet, but just a heads up. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so mm -hmm. once we do that, uh, and we have kind of all of our uh, values uh, written out here, uh, like font stacks and sizes and things like that, uh, we can actually go into our file and just start writing uh, with those styles. So um, there's another piece here, which is our VS Code extension. Um, okay. so, so the idea, as you're writing like font family, it should just pop up with like mono uh, is a token that I wrote. Mm. And I don't think I'm running my dev server, so let me do that. That would help. OK. <laughs> cool. So now we're, yeah, now we're using the monospace font, or the sans serif font, or the serif. And mm -hmm. so this is really everything that's defined in our file. Now we can just kind of use it seamlessly in our CSS. Mm. Um, so. There's also helpful things like, uh, you know, the screen utilities, um, a lot of inspiration from Tailwind here. Um, I think the big difference is you're writing this in a style block. So uh, it's kind of utility CSS um, instead of utility class names, right? Okay. Um, so instead of, like, instead of saying class, you know, uh, what is it, color, blue? 600, mm -hmm. uh, we would style here of color, and we can say blue, and we get all of our token values here, and then say like blue six. Um, so it's a little more uh, close to what I think developers that aren't familiar with Tailwind might uh, know already. Um, you can kind of not have that extra mental barrier where like, oh, now I need to convert it to Tailwind syntax, um, okay. which I know a lot of people love, but that's kind of the idea here. Mm -hmm. um, so we could also do something like uh, write a div 
and I'm just going to make three of these. And we will uh, change the, the flex direction is going to be column. And then I'll probably put this in their own thing. So this is going to be like boxes. And we can just make these. Uh, Flex uh, one with a gap that so here I can use a token value um, instead of saying like one M. Uh, I defined a bunch of spacing tokens mm -hmm. uh, so that those consistent, and uh, you're actually using this value here. And if you hover over, you get like some information about this is the space token that's small and it equals one rem, mm. and then. What we can even do is use a custom property like size. Um, so token CSS knows like, oh, you probably want to use a size variable here. Um, so we'll say large, and then we can set our width and our height to that. Oops, this is actually, this should be on the box itself. Mm -hmm. And then we can set like a background color of red five for now. And we can kind of see this start to come together a little bit. So mm -hmm. maybe make these a little bigger, give it a flex. Uh, just copy this. Cool. Um, and then since we're using CSS, uh, we can also use things like the upcoming nesting syntax. Um, so this is actually in progress right now, but this is going to be an actual native CSS feature uh, where you can okay. use an ampersand and nest your styles, uh, your selectors. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. And we could do something like, you know, red eight uh, when we hover over this, and uh, we're actually changing the background. So it's really embracing CSS and um, you know custom properties, uh, all the stuff you could do normally um, without any limits. So it's just like a bit of help to work with token values that are coming from your design team. Cool. So, uh, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, right now, um, you know, from the tailwind mindset, I'm thinking, okay, am I not going back to writing CSS again? Which, yeah, which sort of is true, but I was thinking, since we can use the tokens from our design tokens to power a sort of a utility first. Maybe per project, right? Make all those um, classes we like. So, yeah. So what do you think about that? Yeah, I think there's a world where you could generate utility classes from this file as well. Um, I personally, uh, I know some people like really love the utility classes and how that works. Um, I think with a lot of these frameworks that have like scope styles and things like that, mm -hmm. um, I think it's really nice to be able to write like CSS and use features like, you know, there's like the upcoming at layer support and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's stuff that, you know, you kind of need to wait for Tailwind to catch up to or bring a syntax to. Um, so definitely if Tailwind works for you, definitely use it. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's, there's a way that this tool could kind of maybe have a utility class mode as well. I'm not. I'm not sure if I want to do that, but uh, okay. it's definitely an option. <laughs> oh yeah, sure, sure. So I always try to keep an open mind and see different perspective. Like I, I love the way we could, you know, get these tokens 
and we could just use them without thinking of okay is it gonna be blue what shade of blue is it you just get it from you from the design tokens so that yeah. makes a whole lot of sense yeah yeah i totally agree and you know you can even build your own uh little uh utility classes like it's kind of up to you to structure it how you want um as with normal css okay. um but if we had like a red um green and blue class here uh we can definitely green five and then blue and yeah it's entirely possible <laughs> you don't like working like this and i think that's fine um mm -hmm. but for people that that do it's it's nice to have the option you know yeah um so having these all set green here Okay. All right. So, and then, yeah, I could see some nesting going on. Is that done by the token CSS framework or is that a prop CSS I don't know of yet? Yeah. So, that is a specification. Um, CSS nesting is uh, in progress right now. So, yeah, it's not. Uh, Token CSS enables it by default, but it's not a feature that we created. Okay. Um, it's it's just kind of there's this thing called uh, post CSS preset environment, mm -hmm. um, which is really cool and enables all these upcoming CSS features um, like custom media, custom selectors, um, nesting, nice. things like that. Nice. Wow. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, there's a lot of awesome upcoming CSS features. And that's also part of the motivation for building this is that uh, there's a lot of cool CSS features coming and I want to play with them. Uh, and you know, the best way to do that is to get as close to CSS as possible uh, and just write it yourself. Hmm, nice, definitely. I would definitely want to try it out. So do you think we could mm, do something more tangible i just want to see the workflow <laughs> yeah like yeah. let's see so maybe just you know a, a random home page and we could just yeah do something on the fly and see how that goes yeah totally mm -hmm. um trying to think of a good uh yeah maybe we could build like a card or something like this um mm -hmm. like like a tailwind example yeah. um cool so to do that uh, I'm going to create a card component with Astro. Mm -hmm. And we'll actually just start with uh, some class names. And I'm actually going to look <laughs> at the markup for this. So we're, so we're kind of looking. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's at least, I guess we can do like a figure. Uh, image, and I guess we can use placeholder here. It's a bit, uh, 400 by 400. I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, also help to, you know, actually see the card <laughs> as yeah. we're doing this. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, that is not the right URL. Let me look up. Yeah, I, I don't know it either. Please. Oh, is it just uh, I have to set an image size? Okay, this is goofy. I'm just okay. <laughs> just trying to get a little uh thing here. Okay, cool. <laughs> Okay. Powered by HTML.com. That's amazing. Um, I've never seen that. And then, you know, we'll have like a div uh, with a block quote. And we can say uh, token CSS is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And then uh, caption. And we 
can do like a H2 or paragraph. Uh, Cool. <laughs> so this is super unstyled at the okay. moment. Um, <laughs> but That's... since we're working with Astro, uh, we can come in and style this. So uh, we actually don't really need class names, which is nice um, because we have scope styles. Um, so it's going to be flex, and we'll just say border. Uh, this will actually give us our colors as well. I'll just put like a, I don't know, one pixel <laughs> solid mm -hmm. border here. And we can start seeing this. Um, mm -hmm. And our div also going to be display flex, but it's going to be a column. And let's see. I think I can take it from here. Uh, one other thing is Tailwind includes like a reset for you. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll just do this really quickly. Um, you probably have this globally. Um, but for now, we'll just do this. And then we can say like a small gap. Uh, and yeah, let's style this. There. Um, so yeah, our, I'd love to tweak the styling a little bit of like the title. So we'll just say you know, font weight might be a uh, regular, is it normal? Um, and then these are, these are token values as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, oops, that's emojis. What is the, <laughs> I can't remember what the keyboard shortcut is, sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. We have token values here too. So, uh, like semi bold. Uh, and we'll just say our font size is uh, small or medium. I kind of like small. We need that on the children. Um, and then we can put, you know, our border radius. So this would be rounded, um, like medium here. I feel like something has happened. Oh. Got a, oh, uh, yeah, they had seen, <laughs> <something> <laughs> died on you. Yeah. Uh, basic block requested and all that. Okay. I think I think that's an M1 issue. I've been hitting that recently. I'm, I'm not sure what that is. Mm. Uh, interesting. Are we getting any updates here? Ah, that is the wrong thing. That's why. Okay. Order. <laughs> yeah. Order radius is going to be small. There we go. And we'll say overflow. It in. And our div. We should add some padding here. Medium. Uh, let's see, aspect ratio one. Uh, 50. 
I don't know, 33%. There we go. And let's also add like a box shadow. Ooh, I wonder. Um, so yeah, I think this would be more fun with like a background color. Mm -hmm. And we can get rid of the border now. Um, and maybe the block quote is going to be font family. Come on now. Okay. Um, it's coming together <laughs> so pretty good. It's coming together. Uh, live design <laughs> always takes a while, and I don't yeah. have something to go off. So <laughs> yeah, it's it's all right. Like it's it's cool. Yeah. Um, I think the difference. Um, yeah, with Tailwind, like you're gonna get going pretty quick, and I love how many things it has out of the box for you. Um, but if you want to, you know, try a slightly different style um, yeah. and have more control over it, um, this is totally an option. There's yeah. another cool thing that okay. I think one of the things that Tailwind users really like is that um, it comes with a lot of stuff out of the box. Mm -hmm. um, so you're not like coming up with these token values uh, mm -hmm. every time. And I think that's another great way to work. So you could actually do that here. We have a preset okay. um, that is pretty similar. Um, uh, nice. Yeah, so that is actually going to do much of the same stuff. And if we just look at um, our repo here, you can see what the preset is. And obviously, once there's docs, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we'll have that. But it's yeah, it's part of the core uh, thing. So this just kind of gives you uh, some basic colors and things like that out of the box. Okay. So um, how do you extend the presets? Like maybe have like a brand color and stuff. Totally. Um, so that's part of this. Uh, you could say, you know, color. Um, we could have brand is going to be an object. Uh, we'll say primary. And this would be like a value. Um, so you reference other tokens by this syntax, um, mm -hmm. which is part of the specification. So it's a reference uh, with curly braces. Okay. Uh, and you could say like colors. Let's see, I'm trying to remember the syntax right now. I think it is you know, purple, I think it's purple. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm just trying to remember if you put color in front of it. I think you do. Uh, I think you say color, purple, five. Uh, so we might, I'll have to check if that works. I think we say, and primary now. No, that's not working. That's embarrassing. I think that's... I got the syntax wrong. <laughs> it, it, it's all right. Um, OK. Cool. Um, yeah, so you sort of referencing some tokens already that comes from the presets and you could base mm -hmm. of that or you could go with no more so i think it supports just hexadecimal and um, named colors yes so in the uh format here you can kind of see everything that is supported um and if you go to the different types um 
here. So color is a uh, 24-bit um, RGB mm. or RGB. So yes, it's just a hex. Um, okay. And you can say that it's it's color. It's oh, nice. Stuff. Cool, cool. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, there's also, what's really cool about this is that mm -hmm. it is uh, in progress. So if you go um, and look at the GitHub, uh, there's a lot of open issues and um, there are, you know, conversations going on about what these look like. So um, if this is something that you're excited about and you want to mm -hmm. go see like, oh, how can I get involved in this? Or like, oh, I wish the syntax was like this. Uh, you could definitely go to this uh, design tokens slash community group uh, and open an issue and have a conversation with the people writing the specification. So I think that's really awesome. Yeah, cool. Definitely. So I love specs a lot. So definitely I'm going to look at how I could do something with it. So yeah, I think we should be at time because it's oh. it's more of you showing us this new in progress um tech called design tokens and how because I know a whole lot of folks that still write CSS. So they are definitely gonna have a lot of value from this. And yeah. if I'm in a team that don't like Tailwind, for example, this is definitely gonna be what I'm gonna pitch forward because now you could use your BAM or whatever, but you have your design tokens in there to like res um, give you all these um, tokens to use already. So it's it makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the value of uh, going from a design team uh, and just handing the development team a file of a bunch of stuff they can use right out of the box is is pretty invaluable. Um, so I think that's why I'm really excited about this tool. Yeah, sure, sure. It's it just makes the hands up pretty easy. Like definitely love it. Yeah. So do you have anything you want to like plug? Like how can we reach you? if someone wants the this session and is interested in design token? Do is there like a Discord or what? what uh, do you get to do? There's no Discord at the moment, but okay. uh, tokencss.com. You can join us on uh, on GitHub and uh, open an issue, have a conversation with me. Mm -hmm. um, I would be super excited for any uh, contributions. So definitely it's an in-progress thing and I'm excited for it to keep growing. Yeah, sure. So we could also wish on Twitter, right? Uh, yes, my Twitter is n underscore more. N -more. Uh, you can find, yes, you can find me here. I have a spooky right. Halloween name at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> it's, that's all right. Cool, gotcha. All right, so <laughs> thank you so much for your time and teaching me token css and design tokens i'm definitely going to check it out and yeah any other words before we call it a session close no i think that's it thanks so much for having me this was super fun cool